Have you ever needed to remote control and monitor your camera? Let's talk about three apps that can do that. I'm Sebastian and welcome to my channel where I talk about tech because I like it. So today we're going to talk about the pros and cons to three apps that let you wirelessly control and monitor your camera. The first two are Lumix apps, but the last one also works with other camera brands. I will be using my Lumix G9. All of these apps can start and stop recording and they all connect over Wi-Fi. The Lumix apps also connect through Bluetooth, but that's just for remote shutter control and it doesn't give you the monitoring option. But the focus of this video is remote control and monitoring over Wi-Fi. So first up is the Lumix Sync app. The Lumix Sync app is available for iOS and Android. It lets you control quite a bit. For example, you can use touch to focus in the app, just like you can on the LCD screen of the Lumix G9. When the camera is set to manual focus, you can actually manually focus from within the app, but it is a little bit jumpy. So a very smooth focus pull isn't really possible, but it does allow you to autofocus when in manual focus by hitting the AF icon. You can set white balance, ISO, shutter speed and aperture. And when you go into the quick menu, it gives you even more settings to control like recording format, recording quality, color profile or picture profile, filter settings, metering function and some more. You can even save your G9's settings to your phone, just like you can to the SD card in the camera. If you want to know more about this, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. There definitely is some lag between the image on the LCD screen on the camera and the app, but I think it's pretty good considering the fact that it's wireless and that the image quality is pretty decent. It's not like the image on the LCD display, but it's good enough. What I think is not so nice about this app is that it doesn't allow for full screen monitoring and that it doesn't have the option for, for example, waveform. And although you can see the zebras in the app when they're turned on on the camera, there's no way of controlling the zebras or turning them on or off from within the app. Second is the Lumix Image app. This app is like the Sync app, available for iOS and Android. It has similar features as the Sync app, but it does allow you to do a little bit more. The basics are still possible, like white balance, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, and the quick menu. You can still control the focus area, just like in the Sync app, but with the extra option to change the autofocus mode to, for example, tracking or single point autofocus from within the app. Furthermore, and this is a big advantage, it allows for full screen monitoring, making it much easier to judge whether your composition is how you want it to be. Again, like the Sync app, there is definitely a bit of lag between the image on the camera LCD and what you see on the screen on your phone. And it's similar to the Sync app and also the image quality is pretty much the same. If your phone has a airplane mode, this definitely helps a bit with the lag because the only communication it has to maintain is the communication between the app and the camera. The last one is a paid third-party app that works with compatible cameras from Panasonic, Sony and Canon. It's called Field Monitor. It is, however, an iOS-only app, so not available for Android. This app is packed with features, although it can't do anything your camera can't do, but it can do things the other apps can't do. First off, it has full screen monitoring with transparent overlays for waveform, vector scope, histogram, all adjustable in size, transparency, and refresh rate. The basics are also controllable. Aperture, shutter speed, ISO, 
white balance. Even whilst recording, it features on-screen markers, frame line and mask with adjustable safe areas, aspect ratios, several grids, center markers and customizable crosshair. There is focus assist with variable sensitivity and four peaking modes. You can import viewing LUTs into the app. So when you shoot in log, VLOG L in my case, you can monitor a proper image and I use a VLOG L to Rec 709 LUT. And there are some built-in LUTs. It has false color overlay that is fully adjustable for checking exposure. It does horizontal and vertical image flip. It even has an anamorphic de-squeeze mode for 1.33 times, 1.5 times, 1.8 and 2 times anamorphic lenses. All the settings are easy to access and the interface is really easy to use. As an extra, you can set it to automatically restart recording if your camera has a recording limit so that you don't have to manually hit record again. One thing I did notice about this app is that there seems to be a bit more lag between the camera and the image on the app compared to the Lumix apps. Overall, I think the Field Monitor app has the most features, is the most useful and the most user-friendly. The Lumix apps have some advantages though. They seem to have a bit less lag compared to the Field Monitor app and there are some functions specific to Lumix cameras that the Field Monitor app doesn't have. Like for example, saving your G9's settings to your phone, changing your picture profile, setting your metering mode and the autofocus mode. What apps do you use to remote control your camera? And if you use one of the apps that I've been talking about in this video, what are your experience with them? please let me know in the comments. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.